Hello everyone and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be doing an ACT math problem. And this is cited as one of the hardest ACT math problems in existence. The poem reads, Region Q shown in the figure is defined by x minus 6 whole squared plus y minus 4 squared is less than or equal to 100 with y greater than or equal to 0 and x greater than or equal to 0. And so what is the approximate area of region Q in square units? Um, if you see from this equation, I think many of you will notice that this is basically a circle. So this is just a circle, and the diagram makes it pretty obvious that it's a circle. And if we look at the answer, the way that we have to answer this, it asks for an approximate area. So that suggests that finding the area of this wacky region will be very hard. And so they want us to find some sort of approximation for it. So how would we do that? Well, um, we might want to split this up into smaller regions, and a good strategy to splitting it up is usually to use the radius in some way. So what we could do is we could maybe uh, connect these two points, and then we'd have to draw the radii. Then we'd have to find the length of this, we'd have to find the angle between them using the law of cosines, which is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta equals c squared. And that just gives the cosine of the angle. We'd have to arc cos it. So we'd have to use that to find the area of this whole region. Then we'd have to find the area of this region. And we'd have to add it up to get an approximate answer. But uh, many of you know that the ACT is a very fast-paced test with 60 questions for the math section to be done in under an hour. And so if you want to get a 36, you usually have to solve most of them, if not all. And so you'd have to want to answer this quickly too to leave time for other questions. So how would you be able to do this? Well, instead of splitting up by the radius, we can see that we have these two lines here, and so that motivates us to exploit symmetry within this uh, circle. And so we see that these two regions are both by a circular arc and two lines, while this region is two lines and another circular arc. And so we essentially want to use these kinds of uh, places to break up the part over here into these places. So if we, the best way to do that is just to reflect these lines over the radius, since that means the line over here will be essentially the same as line over here, except reflected over the radius. It would have the same length and the same endpoints on the circle, except just with a different kind of x. So we reflect this line and we get this, we reflect this other line and we'll get something like this. And so now what we found is that we basically created this Q region is split up into three rectangles, which are this, this, and this. One triangle, which is this, and we have three sort of circular arcs, uh, which we want to find the area above. And so if we go back to our problem, we have an approximate area, the answer choices, given are very um, loose in some sort of way. What this means is that they go up by 50 each time. And so that means the area of region Q, they, they don't want us to find like it within maybe two or three units. They want us to find it essentially within 25, since that's 50 over two. So we want to essentially use some sort of bounding argument to bound the area of region Q. And how would we do that? Well, whenever you want to bound something, you essentially want to have the area is less than or equal to Y for some Y and greater than or equal to some X. So essentially, if we can find x and y, then we can use that to bound a, and use that to find our answer. So first, let's look for a lower bound. Well, with lower bounds, with bounding in general, we can do whatever we want for a lower upper bound, as long as it satisfies the fact that lower bounds are less than the actual area, while upper bounds are greater. But we want to find a reasonable lower bound so that uh, that can help us in finding the answer. For example, if we make a lower bound of just this rectangle over here, that would be a lower bound, but it wouldn't be a reasonable one, since there's still a lot left over here. So we want to find a lower bound of shapes that we know how to find the area. And that's this rectangle, we can find the area of this rectangle, we can find the area of this rectangle, and we can find the area of this rectangle. So, if we add up the four areas of these, then we can find a lower bound for their region Q. And so, what is this uh, area? Well, we'd have to find the length and width of all these rectangles and triangles, 
So let's try to find that. We see that um, since this is x equals 0, this is the origin, so this is 0, 0. We reflected this 6 units to the radius and then another 6 to this other line. So this length is 12. Similarly, the length of this segment is 8. And so this length over here is also 12 since it's a triangle or it's a rectangle. Well, this length is also 8. And so if we want to find the length of this, we see that um, we can form a right triangle with a length of the radius, which is 10. This length is 6 since it goes from x equals 6 to x equals 0. And then this length over here will be, by Pythag, just 8. And since this length is 4, this length over here, this other length over here will have to be 4. So let's just put 4 over here. And that means this length over here is also 4. This length over here is 12, similar to this one. Uh, this length is 8. This length is... Since uh, this length is 6, the radius is 10. And this length is 4, from here to here. The length of this whole thing is the square root of 10 squared minus 4 squared, which is the square root of 84. And so this length over here is the square root of 84 minus 6. So, and although this may seem very time consuming, um, a lot of what I did was just basically common sense in finding these lengths. Since you know a lot of these are equal, such as these 12, and then the rest is just very easy Python. So this wouldn't really take long. I'm just going slow uh, for the benefit of the viewer. So this length is the square root of 84 minus 6. And we're given calculators on the ACT math section. So we can always calculate this length later. Similarly, this is also the square root of 84 minus 6. So the area of these three rectangles is equal to 12 times 8, which is this. Plus, this is 96. Uh, 12 times 4, 48. So, plus uh, square root of 84 minus 6 times 8, and we can put that in your calculator to get the square root of 84 minus 6 is about 3.17. So, we can just substitute this over here. And so, plus 3.17 times 8, which by calculator is about 25.36. And then we can add the area of this triangle, which is BH over 2. And this is square root of 84 minus 6 times 4 over 2, which is about 3.17 times 2, which is about 6.34. So adding this all up, we'll get 96 plus 48 plus 25.36 plus 6.34. And so that's 175.7. And thus, 175.7 is a lower bound for the area of the region. So we'll say x is equal to 175.7. Now it suffices to find y. We have to find an upper bound of this. So we have to find something that encompasses all of q and something more. And a nice way to do this is to go back to our symmetry argument. We have two, we have one big region here, and then we have a small region here. So, we can essentially find out what we did earlier, we can make rectangles out of it. To find a rectangle out, we can make it a square, and we can extend this rectangle out for a very crude approximation. So, these new lengths we have to recompute. is really annoying. Okay, so this new length goes from um, x equals 12 to x equals 16, so this is 4. This is still 8 since we just extended the rectangle. This triangle, um, this stays at the square root of 84 minus 6 since we're just making this triangle into a square, so its area essentially gets doubled, so we'll just keep this as 3.17 and this is 4. And then this goes now from x equals or y equals 10. Or no, y equals 8. This is this is y equals 8. 
and it goes to y equals 14. So this new length is equal to 6. So that's this thing. So if we were to find an upper bound for this region, this new uh, region is composed of these three rectangles, and two of them are bigger rectangles plus a square. And so this area is equal to, for this rectangle, it's again 12 times 8, which is 96, plus uh, 6 times 12 now for this upper rectangle, which is 72, plus 72, plus this uh, right rectangle, which is 4 times 8, which is 32, plus this square, which is about 3.17 times 4, which is about plus 12.68. This is 96. So if we add these all up, we'll get 96 plus 72 plus 32 plus 12.68, which is equal to 168 plus 32 plus 12.68, which is 212.68. Uh, let me just verify that. Yeah, okay. So that's an upper bound since we know that the area of this is strictly greater than the area of region Q. So that's equal to Y. So now we have that A is less than or equal to uh, 212.68 is greater than or equal to 175.7. So we've bounded this region. Now let's go back to answer choices and see if it fits with anything. Well, we see that it fits with answer choice C between 175 and 225. Since 175.7 is greater than that, well, 212.168 is less than 225. And so we can mark answer choice C as an answer and move on. And this concept of symmetry uh, took a while to do, and I, I'm betting that this was one of the later problems in the test. But a lot of the uh, steps that I was doing, you could do in maybe just under a few seconds, since it was just finding lengths of these segments, and a lot of them are just doing basic addition or basic Pythagorean theorem, and just adding all these areas up. So this concept of symmetry is very, um, it's, it's very useful in problem solving outside of ACT and actual math competitions. In fact, a problem very similar to this appeared on ARMO, which is American Regions and Mathematics League, um, in 2011, I believe, and it was number four in the individual round. I'll link that problem later if you want to uh, try that on your own, because it uses a lot of the same symmetry principles as this problem. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. Check out our other problem solving videos for math, physics, or coding, or check out some of our animation videos, such as the proof of herons or proofs without words. And if you like this video, please spread this to your friends and make sure to um, spread the word. Thank you.